the mighty God we serve. We can depend on him. We can sleep in his arms without worry, without thinking. Today we are going to visit something that we had done somewhere along the line. We are going to visit the issue of husbands. We are reading 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Husbands, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and as being hers together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Husbands, are you a husband or do you intend to be a husband? I am not talking about the fellow who is a lesbian and claims to be a male partner of abomination. I am talking about a true male, created male by God, and who remains male in sexual relationship to a female partner, not to a male partner. So when I'm talking husbands here, I'm not talking about also homosexual men who live in abomination. I am talking about those who live according to the word of God, male as male, female as female. Recognize, first of all, according to this scripture, that your wife is a weaker vessel. Now, here women come in. There are women who, by orientation, by training, by all of the seminars that they attend, by feminism, have come to the conclusion that they are in competition with men. There are women who think that they have to show themselves stronger than their husbands. They have to become the heads of their household. And there is some madness in church. God did not create a woman to stand behind the man. He created the woman to be side by side with the man. They are both equal. But the scripture says Christ is the head of the church. In the same way, the man is the head of the woman. Now, so how would you change that? Why would you all of a sudden decide that there's no head? Both of them are the same. God never created such a thing. But that is the kind of thing you hear coming out of churches. That's unfortunate. It should never be. Feminism has no role in the scripture. The scripture has its own orders. And they should be followed according to God. Your wife is a weaker vessel. Treat her in that way. That is what God expects you to do. Your wife is not a punching bag. Why would you keep beating a weaker vessel? If anything, you should take care of the weaker vessel. That's what he's saying. Your business as a man is to take care of your wife. Don't expect your wife to take care of herself. If you are really married, indeed, you'll find that there are so many things that you have to do for your wife. And some men... I don't even know. She can't do anything. She can't think for herself. Every kind of story, no? That's what God expected you to do. She is to help you, a helpmeet, but you must take care of her. She's weaker. And that's weaker in every sense of the word, weaker. Like I said, forget feminism. We are talking about the word of God. And he says, you and her, you are join hers to the grace of God. What is the grace? Grace of eternity. That is where people mistake it. Oh, we are just the same before God. Yes, you are a soul. She is a soul. But at the same time, God says, treat her differently, physically. As a soul before God, yes, both of you are going there together, if indeed both of you are going. So treat her with understanding. That's where it started from. And that's the emphasis. What does it mean? She does not understand. She will fail. She's likely to do the one that you don't want. If anything, she's prone to it. So how do you behave when those things happen? Realize that that's the nature, that's the way God has structured her. So he said, understand that these deficiencies, if you call them deficiencies, they exist. But I would rather say this is the structure of the woman. Understand her structure. And treat her in that way. And then it comes to a conclusion so that your prayers may not be hindered. Boy, a whole lot of men, their prayers are not going anyway because of their wives. Anywhere at all. The prayer is not going, it's just there. Why? Because of the relationship with the wife. 
And the man has prayed and prayed, and nothing is forthcoming. And at a certain point, it looks like God is not hearing you again. No, you are treating your wife wrongly. Change your style, man, if it is going to work. I am not talking about the wife who is fighting the husband desperately to become the head of the household. But even in that situation, you are still meant to treat her with understanding. He said, live with her, dwell with her, with understanding. That means that there is something wrong. Ab initio, there is something wrong in this business. Understand that. You know, men would want to insist on everything being right according to them. Whoever made you God of the whole earth. So that you are the one who knows everything that is right. And sometimes you are actually faulting God. Why did God create this woman like this? That is why God created her like that. So that she can be like that and see if you can function properly. That is why God tells you, dwell with her with understanding. Understand her. Realize that that is the creation of God. Perfect in the sight of God. So don't start talking about deficiencies. She is perfect in the sight of God, the way she is. Understand her exactly that way. Treat her right, and your prayers will go places. The message of today to the men, do it right, and you will have your prayers answered. Even those prayers of yours that have not been answered over the ages, the answers will come. Women, also... You are not left out of this. You are not in competition with your husband. He is the head. Treat him as the head. It will be well with you. It is well with you. The single ones, before you step in, learn a lesson today. Marriage is supposed to bring a blessing, not a problem. And men, never ever let your prayers be hindered. Watch your relationship with your wives. May the Lord indeed give you grace and have mercy upon you. And open your eyes again to live in that your household according to his word, that it may be well with you, all of you, in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. It's